Good morning. Today we're going to drive all the way to El Paso, Texas from California. This is our first road trip on our brand new 2024 GV70. Genesis GV70 is the proper name. I love driving. I hate flying. So we're going to drive there. My wife is going to fly back because uh, she's going to stay back. This is the first time that we're going to take this vehicle on such a, a long trip. And as you saw in the video, or maybe I'll put it right now. See, this is a five passenger vehicle. And we only have two dogs. There's wifey. Good morning. And then we have, she's set up here in the back and we had to put that rag there to protect the seats a little bit. So this is the cargo area. And notice how we have this checking medium sized luggage. And then we have that carry on, another carry on, and it's almost full or to capacity, right? So this vehicle came with a lot of accessories included with the price of the vehicle, but it didn't come with the privacy cover here. So that's one thing that I'm not in love with. And I looked it up and it's about $300, which is a lot of money, but I think I'm gonna get it because then you pull over in the road and leave the vehicle unattended. And there's uh, this glass, it's a little bit see-through-ish. See that? You can see the cases there. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get my dog a little bit of comfort with this window shade. I don't think this is a family vehicle. I think this is more like for people like me that want the convenience of, a, of an SUV but miss those uh, mid-sized sedans of the past. That's the type of vehicle this is. It moves people, sure, it's, uh, it's got seating for five, but I, I think it can do about three or four people comfortably. And depending on the length of your trip, you may have a little bit of um, storage shortage. I'm only 5'11", and I like to ride all the way back. This vehicle doesn't have that much room, doesn't have that much leg room in the back seat. So I would say that if we had a third person, that person will have to ride on the passenger side just so that he can get a little bit more leg room. What I want to find out in, in this trip is how good is it on gas this is one of those trips where i get to engage the uh, highway driving assist feature that this vehicle has which is amazing i can i have gone as long as maybe a couple of minutes without having to touch the steering wheel which is amazing and uh so we're gonna put all that to the test and i'll let you know how it goes okay 426 it's not that bad remember this vehicle doesn't require you to put 91 octane you can do just 87 so costco today is 426 it's not that bad a couple of weeks ago it was up to closer to the five dollar mark so i'm glad that the prices are a little bit down but once we hit arizona and uh, new mexico the prices really really drop Welcome back. It's been about two and a half hours since we last spoke. We made it to the city of Yuma. This is normally where I stop for the first time because this is the first chance I get to buy cheaper gas in Arizona now. It's been about an, uh, two hours and 25 minutes and we've been averaging 24.2 miles per gallon. Granted, we went over the mountains around Alpine. California gets pretty high. So the rest of the road should be pretty flat with the exception of maybe a few miles from here, we hit another set of mountains. The car is doing really well. This is the, probably this is the longest I've ever been in this car driving without stopping, two and a half hours. Right now I activated the seat massage. Let me show you. This is the massage feature that really works. So let me guess up and then I'll get back with you in a little bit. Notice the difference in price here in Arizona versus California. I paid $4.25, I think, back at Costco, which is one of the cheapest in San Diego. And now here's $3.33. I love gas prices in Arizona. So far, I've done uh, two and a half hours of driving. What makes a big difference is the comfort of the seats. As I said, on my initial review, I find these seats a little hard, but um, they're highly configurable. And I, I think I found my perfect spot. You have the, the seat massage feature, and then you have this leg extender. Usually you find this, for example, in the M Sport package of BMW, but it's the one I had at least was manual. But one advantage that the other one had is that you're able to extend this leg extender a little bit so that your thighs get to rest, or hamstr hamstrings, hamstrings, <laughs> hamstrings get to rest 
uh, so you find a little bit more comfortable. And then I've been playing with the configuration of this seat and I find them, as I said, hard. So sometimes I feel like I'm sitting on the seat, not in the seat. You wanna say hi? <laughs> Let's talk about range while my wife gets back in the car. It says 390 on a full tank. Last time I did this drive, I was about to break the 500 mile mark on the 2007 Acura TSX, but this one is shy of 400. But I, I wanna see if I'm able to break that 400 mile mark on this one, because I know that if I don't drive it too aggressively, I should be able to get a little bit above what it's rated for. These are our doggies meals, but they first need to walk. And there they are, hunting before their meal. After about 35 minutes wasted, time to get back on the road. Next stop, Tucson, Arizona. Okay, this is a perfect scenario where I can show you that highway driving assist. So we're gonna let it go. It's been a few seconds already. So I'm not gonna touch it. I noticed that this system is more reactive to things like weather and road conditions than the Tesla Model Y that I had. Granted, I haven't driven a Tesla with the uh, autopilot in over a year. So I'm sure that the software has upgraded or updated a bit since. But nevertheless, I think this system is really good. <laughs> One thing that is different is that on the Tesla, if it asks you to touch the steering wheel, it literally means that. So as long as you touch any of like the, the volume controls, uh, it resets. On this one, you actually have to touch the steering wheel. So it's been, uh, what, 40 seconds? So let's see how long it goes with me, without me touching it. Yes, this is a straight road and it's in really good shape. So it can go for a lot longer than typical but I think I've done over two minutes I, I have just never timed it so let's time it right now it's over a minute and no I haven't touched it no cheating the whole point of these videos is that you get an actual picture of what the vehicle is in real life because there's no amount of test drive they can do at the buying process of this vehicle because what do you test it for maybe 10 15 20 minutes it's nice to get like a like an elongated test drive, maybe by renting it on two row or something like that, so that you get a real idea of the advantages and shortcomings of a vehicle like this. Okay, it's a minute and 40 seconds. I haven't touched the steering wheel, but let's be fair, this is a super nice road. It just keeps going. But one thing about this system that I really like is starting by the name, Highway Driving Assist. See, it's asking me to touch it. What I like about this system is starting by the name, Highway Driving Assist, which means you're still driving, you're still in charge of the vehicle, it's just gonna take the edge of driving. When I bought my Tesla Model Y with the name Autopilot, the first thing I said on that car was that I didn't think it was an autopilot because to me that's automated pilot, which is not. And then the full self-driving capability, <laughs> that's a joke. When I bought that car, I remember uh, the bottom of the webpage, uh, when you opt for the options, it said that you could get full self-driving for an extra $10,000. And one of the promises was a ability to steer on streets coming soon. Well, it never came. I had it since 2021 and that vehicle still doesn't steer on streets. So I like this because it's a more of, a, of an honest approach to driving assist because as you can see, it does really well keeping the vehicle in the center. To be honest with you, once you start hitting the curves, it's not as precise as the one I had on my Tesla, but it does really well. And I don't rely on this system to do the driving for me. Instead, I just let it help me ease the edge of driving. See how it does in this curve? You're gonna see what I mean. It's gonna follow the curve, possibly it's gonna ask me to. Yes, it did. See, and the Tesla didn't need this. The Tesla will just take the curve with ease. So let's see, there's another slight S-curve here. Jesus, take the wheel. We're letting Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> see, no biggie, we still touch it, right? But one thing I like about this or the Tesla is that you can do lane change and you don't have to reset the HDA. 
and the Tesla, you had to reset it again. And then you had those bells as reminders, which I didn't love. We're on the outskirts on the west side of Tucson and we're here to gas up. And let me show you. I want to keep it honest. So I've been driving about maybe 75, 78, 80 miles an hour and I was able to attain 24.7. But here's the situation. Um, when I stopped right after I gassed up, I was probably feeding the dogs for maybe like 20 minutes right outside of uh, Starbucks. And then we stopped somewhere else for a bathroom break. And then there the car kept idling uh, for maybe another 10, 12 minutes. So I was able to get 24.7. It's doing really good. I, I would say that if I hadn't stopped those two times and I would have given it just pure driving time on the highway, I would have gotten the advertised 26 miles per gallon. Look, 295 sub $3 per gallon gas in Arizona. Where's my other puppy? I was just a little thirsty. One of the reasons why I always opt for vinyl or leather seats is because I like how easy they are to clean and stuff like that. And because I have dogs, I need to make sure that whatever the dogs transpire or, or leak into the seats can be cleaned. So unfortunately, my dog, one of my dogs cannot be in the back seat. She always wants to be um, carried by my wife. So we're gonna have to put this so that, so that my dog doesn't rub her oils onto this seat and then it's gonna stink forever. So we're gonna have to do this. And no, I won't do seat covers because I hate him. But this is one of the reasons why you may not like this mesh material on your Sport Prestige package. Oh well. Unfortunately, the video doesn't tell the whole story and I want to take this moment to say something about the serenity and the calmness of this drive. This vehicle is very quiet and I was just telling my wife how we've been on the road for maybe, uh, I don't want to misspeak, maybe what, seven hours, eight hours in total and um, we, we are able to have conversations in a normal tone of voice without having to be louder. I cannot shut down the lights right now to tell you what is the actual experience of driving at night with the auto dimming side mirrors and I'm very receptive or very um, susceptible to uh, bright lights at night because of my poor vision um, but it's this vehicle eases that for example like right now we needed a uh, rest area so you're able to do the split screen and then have all the rest areas listed so we're aiming for a rest area that is 69 miles from here so little by little I'm getting to know the features of this vehicle and the more I drive it the more I like it here I just wanted to show you the ambient lighting that is really cool and this is so far my favorite color these are small things but they do add to the experience so as you can see this interior when it's dark at night it's just not pitch black you have something going on but nothing that blinds you from the road ahead and that's one of the things I like about this two screen design where the instrument panel is small 12.1 I think it is but it's got all the information you need and it's highly configurable and it's just so minimalist then you have this sleek center screen that is actually pretty cool as well because it has a lot of information but in a small package and I like it because I think I said earlier in the video I just don't like big screens for the sake of it when I had my Tesla Model Y the screen was huge but then again that car was built around the screen and that's not the case for a lot of vehicles but I feel that they just feel pressure to imitate what Tesla has done for years to put those huge screens so I think screens are getting out of control with size so I really like this old school design because if you notice it's a very minimalist interior with plenty of just flat curvy lines and everything is of high quality to the touch and I just love touching different surfaces
very close to our destination. We're on the west side of El Paso. We entered Texas a few miles back, and I just never saw the sign, so you're going to have to take my word for it. But I'm glad that we made it safe and sound. There's more about six miles from our destination. And the bad news is that we were not able to attain the 26 miles per gallon. But as I said earlier in the video, life happens. We had to pull over uh, on our rest area for a 20, 25 minute pit stop. The positive note is that, as you can see, we drove 319 miles since our last refueling. I saw that it said that it had projected 390 miles of range. So if you had 319 plus 101, that would have put us over the 400 mile range mark at precisely 420. So that's positive. That means that this vehicle is capable of breaking the 400 mile range. Finally here. After 12 hours and 20 minutes, we're finally in West El Paso. It was a good drive. I was, I'm a little tired. I mean, it is 12 hours after all. And uh, I did drive by myself. My wife didn't help at all. I liked it. I mean, the seat is very hard, but I did find some comfortable positions. I wish the surfer was a little softer. I mean, the massage feature is pretty good. And then the leg extension support is actually uh, very helpful as well. I did get to try the seat warmers because it is very cold here. <laughs> I have to go to Walmart to get this towel because I don't want my dogs to sit directly onto the surfaces. So yeah, I would say that if you have dogs, these are not the friendliest surfaces for you because your dogs are gonna stink the seats and stain them quickly. Good morning, it's 8.13 and 736 miles away for me to get to beautiful San Diego. My wife is not joining for the way back. Only these two beauties can't wait to be on my lap and I don't expect to spend nearly as much time on details about the way back so if anything extraordinary happens then I'll get back on video if not see you in San Diego gas here in El Paso look at this beauty 283 it's me back again remember how I just told you that I was heading home already well I was lying turns out I was lying because my nephew forgot his Nintendo switch in the car and I have to go back and drop it off. So guess what? My wife just called me back. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna make it to San Diego before seven o'clock tonight. A couple of hours of agony we found a rest area that meets the criteria which means no rain rest area open field let's go walk these puppies i guess those horses are out for a walk as well look at that beauty drinking water back at my favorite gas station. It's just on the outskirts of Tucson. We're gonna gas up and yes, we're gonna get sushi and hit the road. It's raining so I need to stretch my legs because I am getting a little tired. The seats need to be a little softer. Cheap gas again, 279, not bad. So I haven't gassed up since I left El Paso. So I should be able to make it to Yuma. I guess I could drive all the way to San Diego. But I want to stop at Yuma because it's my last chance to get this cheap Arizona gas. So here's the MPG from the last leg, 26 miles per gallon. So we got it. We did it. Saying that my expected range is 405. Let's keep driving. I think these doggies are due for another break. Time to get back on the road after a much needed break for these doggies. We were here for like 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna pull all the way to Tucson. Doing great.
about 250 miles east of my destination, San Diego, California. But I'm going to stop in Yuma, Arizona just to gas up and take advantage of awesome Arizona gas prices. But it's going to get dark pretty soon and I'm not going to be able to shoot anything else uh, in about maybe 30 minutes. So I want to wrap things up right now and maybe do a conclusion video once I get home so I can get you all the details about this first trip of 2024. And of course, it's going to be the first trip that I ever made in this GV70. We're in Yuma and let's look at my last leg, see how I did. There you go, 26.3. So finally, for the first time throughout my trip, I was able to get over 26 miles, which is what's posted by the EPA. So that's pretty good. Sorry for the background noise. The gas here is 3.33 and I have what? Uh, another 50 miles to El Centro. I'm gonna stop at my mom's for dinner and then I'm gonna drive through all the way to San Diego, which is another 110 miles, I believe. So, and then I'll be home. Thank you for sticking around this far into the video. And right now, what I wanted to show you is the automatic high beams. They go in and out depending on oncoming traffic and then uh, these the characteristics of the road. Sometimes I'm on high beams and then it go back down. Do you see that change? It's pretty cool. So all these cool little features just make the experience so much better. Like right now, I'm chilling with my dogs right here. They're asleep, one of them is on my lap. And I'm just having a good time. I'm about 45, maybe, maybe an hour away from home. My final report of the night, 25.4 miles per gallon for the last legs, which is 168 miles. Not bad considering we went over the, the grade. And um, so I was on the road, it's 10 o'clock. That means that I've been on the road for about 13 hours, minus a couple of hours that I spent at my mom's house. Uh, overall, it was a great trip, and I'll give you a quick summary. Let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for making it this far into the video. I hate making long videos, but I felt that it was important to be detailed of what led me to my ratings that I'm about to share with you. Um, there's so many things that happen in a drive that is as long as it was, 1,600 miles. And I wanted to cover that in the video with images and statements so that when I get to this, it makes more sense to you. And I wrote some notes to, so that I don't omit anything. I cannot believe that you actually hung out this far into the video unless you skip to this point. doesn't matter. So let me go over my numbers. The average MPG was 25.25. This is not scientific. All I did, I had five Phillips, so I divided it by five. But I would say out of those five legs on two of those legs i either met or beat the 26 miles per gallon which is about pretty good so the miles traveled were about 1600 round trip miles throughout the video you heard me talking about the seats um, they are on the firmer side i repeat that throughout the video because they are so i would say that if you had products from bmw specifically the m4 package that's kind of how similar they are to that particular type of seat that is very hard. But in this case, they're very comfortable. So I did find some comfortable positions, but they are on the firmer side. They're not a deal breaker. So I would say that if, if I had to rate them between one and 10, 10 being the most comfortable seats, um, I'll give them a seven. They don't fail, but they're not extraordinarily comfortable. The leg extension is pretty good. That helps. And also the seat massager. That's a, an amazing feature. Unfortunately, it's only for the driver not for the passenger. About the comfort features, I would say that the, that the cabin is really quiet, so it really helps on longer trips because you're talking to your, to your companion and uh, you don't have to be screaming because the, the vehicle is very serene, very quiet. Uh, another thing that I really like was the automatic high beams. So I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I just set them to automatic and they will, um, they, it will throw the high beams off and on depending on the landscape and oncoming traffic. So I found that pretty good. Another comfort feature, the heated seats. The uh, Texas desert is pretty, pretty cold. So the heated seats, they do make a difference. The heated steering wheel, of course, that's very, very uh, nice because it's, it's freezing cold outside. So when you get back in the ride, it takes a while before your hands warm up to the, to the temperature of the cabin. So having that feature to heat up the steering wheel it's actually pretty helpful. Um, the panoramic sunroof, um, I love panoramic sunroofs. Um, I have opted for those in my last three new vehicles because they give you this sense of openness. So I would say that in this case, even though this is a panoramic sunroof, the tinting is very, very dark. So at night, you don't get to see the beautiful stars above you like you do in the Model Y. 
Now, I used to complain about the amount of why uh, the sunroof was too light, so it would let too much sunlight during the day. So this one doesn't have that problem, but the trade-off is that at night, you don't get to see the stars, so it looks pretty dark in here. And then the tires, I, I tried to put some footage of the rains that we hit on the way back in Arizona particularly. So I would say that the tires do really well in moderate to, to heavy rain. Um, they're pretty good. And what is it? The highway driving assist, that's actually pretty good. I actually devoted like three minutes of my video to that because I find it very, very helpful. In the cargo area, I do mention that it's on the, on the smaller side. This is a family vehicle. If your family is small like mine, it's just me and my wife and the doggies, maybe a small child, but uh, to have four adults for as many hours as I was driving, I don't highly recommend that. Let's say that this is not the vehicle for that. Can you do it? Sure, you can do it. I briefly mentioned about the, um, the auto dimming side mirrors as well as this one the rear view mirror is also auto dimming so at night you don't get blinded by those trucks that i saw an abundance of on highway 10. as far as anything else well i'm going to be uploading videos about this vehicle throughout my experience with it uh, in the summer we plan to make a trip to possibly arkansas so it's going to be crazy it's going to be uh, a very long trip i think it's something like closer to 24 hours or Florida, it could be either or. In that case, it's gonna be over 30 hours for that trip. So if you're interested in seeing how I do with this vehicle in the, in the long term, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.